about that apache ignite is a distributed database it is distributed by nature that means it can run on multiple nodes or multiple machines it runs as a cluster and a cluster can have a number of nodes running here the node can be anything it can be a virtual machine it could be a physical machine like laptop or any managed offering provided by the cloud provider or any virtual machine running in the cloud environment so it doesn't matter the bottom line is when we run ignite as a cluster it runs on multiple nodes so let's say we started running ignite so there is this one node this signifies a node which is running ignite so we have a one node cluster running right now later we start another node so we have another node which is running ignite and then we start yet another node which is also running ignite now when we run multiple nodes multiple instances of ignite the good thing is they discover each other automatically to create a cluster so when we run three instances of ignite they will be able to discover each other automatically and this will form a cluster so right now there is this ignite cluster with three nodes and let's say if we run another instance another node it will also detect this cluster and the resulting cluster will be running on four nodes so whenever we run different instances of ignite different nodes have this capability to discover each other automatically all right but how do they discover each other automatically so there is something called discovery mechanism or discovery services so by using discovery mechanism or discovery service nodes find each other and they form a cluster when it comes to ignite ignite supports two kind of discovery mechanism number one is tcp ip discovery and number two is zookeeper so ignite can use the capabilities of zookeeper to implement a service discovery solution and that's how nodes will find each other there is one other option which is related to cloud so let's say the cluster is running in cloud in that case we can use some of the cloud offerings all right so with the help of discovery service whether it is tcp ip or zookeeper nodes will find each other and they will form a cluster and so when we configure ignite we provide a discovery port and this discovery port is used by discovery services to implement the service discovery solution all right so let's say we have a cluster of four nodes and they found each other by using discovery service we have provided the discovery port so we have a cluster running but this cluster won't do anything because nodes not only need to find each other but they also need to communicate with each other so in order to communicate with each other we need to provide one more configuration which is also called communication port so there are two ports involved one is discovery port and another one is communication port discovery port is used by discovery mechanism to find the related nodes to create a cluster and when we have the cluster the cluster will use the communication port so that nodes can talk to each other so we have the cluster and we have the nodes now all these nodes in general in ignite a node can be of two types so it could be a server node or a client node what is the difference between a server node and a client node well as per the documentation the server nodes are the workhorses of the cluster they do the major work they are used in caching the data in running the compute tasks and everything so everything that goes on related to the ignite functionality it's the server node the client node is used to interact with the ignite cluster and it doesn't participate in other tasks like caching so the client node will not cache any data until and unless let's say we are implementing a near cache solution that we will talk about later but for now just focus on one thing that a node can be a server node or a client node and client node is only used to interact with the server let's say to trigger some commands to maybe trigger a task but the actual task will be executed on the server nodes on the cluster so we have node either it is server node or client node then all the nodes using the discovery port and discovery service 
find each other they create a cluster and they use communication port to communicate with each other so this is a 10000 feet view of the ignite cluster all right let's move on next we'll talk about baseline topology in order to understand baseline topology we need to understand rebalancing first rebalancing is an activity that happens in the cluster so let's say we have a cluster of three nodes so this is node number 1 this is node number 2 and this is ignite node number 3 and they form a cluster in the cluster each ignite node stores some data it could be for the caching or for the in memory database or data grid so here let's say n1 stores some data set s1 n2 stores some data set s2 and n3 is storing some data set s3 all right so this is the current state of the cluster now think about what would happen if n3 goes down let's say n3 crashed so that also means this data set is not accessible anymore s3 and we don't want to do that so to avoid such situations what happens whenever there is a change in the cluster some kind of rebalancing happens in order to move the partitions or the data around the cluster we will understand the partitioning we will cover the partitioning in more detail in one of the future slides all right but for now just focus on that we need to move some data around so here if n3 goes down we will move this data to let's say s2 or maybe s1 because we need to store the data we, we don't want to lose the data so we need to manage s3 data which was earlier on node 3 now similarly let's say a new node joins the cluster so earlier there were three nodes but now there is fourth node as well and it it doesn't store any data it has no data so what we will do maybe a subset of data from all three nodes will be stored on node 4 so let's say s4 to reduce the burden on n1 n2 and s3 that is also a possibility so this activity is called rebalancing because the cluster rebalances itself in terms of the data which is stored on the nodes now as you might have guessed already in case there is any change in the cluster whether a node is leaving or a node is joining rebalancing would ideally happen and baseline topology is all about controlling the rebalancing activity when should it happen otherwise any change in the cluster would trigger the rebalancing and it is not cheap because if you have to move the data around the cluster to different nodes all right so what baseline topology does it defines you can say a desired state a base state of the topology the base state of the cluster and in general let's say whenever the cluster is up when the nodes are getting up the cluster can identify the correct state when the cluster is up and operational and at that point of time it can take a snapshot that hey this is my baseline topology with let's say three nodes and so once the baseline topology is set rebalancing would happen only if there is a change in the baseline topology only if it impacts the baseline topology and one important thing in this discussion is that baseline topology only includes or considers the server nodes no client nodes will be considered as part of the baseline topology